Star Trek, but ICT, Graphics Lab, and Shoah Foundation has come together to bring Holocaust survivors' testimonies to light through holograms. Let's take a closer look. My name is Pinchas Guter. I will answer any questions you might have for me. How old were you when the war ended? I was between the ages of 13 and 14 when the war ended in 1945. Do you remember any songs from your youth? This is a lullaby that my mother used to sing to me, and I still remember it. It's in Polish. Thank you, and thanks very much for uh, your interest. Well. Um, I work at the University of Southern California's Institute for Creative Technologies, which is trying to perform uh, research in new kinds of virtual reality, and we've been doing that for some time. Uh, but a little over a year ago, we got approached by the Shoah Foundation Institute, which, uh, as you might know, was uh, started by Steven Spielberg after he made the movie Schindler's List uh, in the 1990s, uh, and then set at USC with the goal of trying to record and preserve the testimony of the survivors of the Holocaust. You realized even back then that uh, these uh, people are aging, uh, they have amazing stories to tell, and they have incredibly important stories to tell. And so they have over their period of time logged um, thousands upon thousands of hours of testimony on, you know, uh, beta SP videotape. Well, the uh, thought was that, you know, we're, we're kind of toward the, the end of when we can really record these stories as well as possible, and there's new technology available. There's higher resolution cameras, um, there's the opportunity to shoot in 3D stereo, and there was the thought maybe we could actually record this in a way that would be holographic, so that when future holographic displays are created, that we could actually show these people exactly as they were, exactly what they said, but three-dimensionally, projecting them life-size into, for example, a classroom situation. Uh, and it would seem like they're really there. And with a little bit of um, artificial intelligence technology coming from our natural language group, potentially even answer the questions of, of school children or audience members who want to ask them about their experiences. Sure. So there's, there's a question I have is that um, I think the project is brilliant. Um, you know, I, I remember watching a video, uh, the hologram of, of Tupac, and um, I was like, "Like, can you, you know, how do you take that experience and actually bring it over to the educational world? Because there's so much you can you can do now, uh, and sort of like thinking out of the box. So, how does that work with like asking questions?" Well, uh, I'm actually uh, standing uh, in, uh, uh, in in front of a device that we call uh, Light Stage Six. So it's a uh, it's a, um, a sphere of uh, LED illumination that you can see right here. Uh, and we did a uh, sort of a trial test of this project uh, with the Shoah Foundation Institute and the ICT's Natural Language Group uh, with a real uh, survivor of the Holocaust, uh, Mr. Pinchas Guter, who was uh, in, a, in, a, in a concentration camp in Poland uh, as a teenager. Uh, and he lost both of his parents there very sadly. Uh, he has had a, a, a wonderful and, and rich life uh, eventually however, and uh, goes around to classrooms and, and um, tells of his experiences, and he's done this for, for some time. He's a, a wonderful storyteller. And we actually had him here in our light stage getting uh, filmed, answering about three hours of questions uh, from uh, Stephen Smith, the, uh, the head of the Shoah Foundation Institute, with three um, uh, different types of technology. We had, uh, first of all, very high-resolution cameras filming him, we had multiple cameras uh, filming him uh, in high speed as well. And then we were also using our light stage device, which also gets used on you know, various kinds of Hollywood visual effects movies, uh, to shoot him with something called time multiplex illumination. When we record somebody in that way, 
we're actually changing the illumination on them very quickly. It looks like these lights are solid on right now, but the dome is actually very rapidly lighting uh, the person in the middle from the front, from the back, from the left, from the right, from above, and from below. And as a result, the high-speed cameras pick up all these different lighting passes, and we can compute how the light plays off of the face, which is another way of computing the three-dimension of what they're doing in there. One of the other parts of um, you know, th this project is finding, I guess, there's, there's, there's already, as you mentioned, uh, hours and hours of, of footage. Um, how are you going to pick and choose what to use or picking and choosing the survivors? Well, the Shoah Foundation uh, works with uh, a lot of different survivors, and there are, very sadly, uh, quite few left at this point. I, I just heard that maybe the estimate of the ones who would be available uh, you know, to tell their stories uh, might be in the, in the low hundreds at this point. Uh, but they're in touch with many of these people. They're folks that they've recorded 10 years ago. Uh, and the goal would be to get you know, some of the people who have some of the richest stories to tell and who are the best storytellers uh, and, of course, are willing to work with us to answer maybe 12 hours of questions asked over the course of three days. So we don't want to you know, completely tire these people out, but it will be an, an intense experience with the goal of getting a database of so many possible responses to so many possible questions so that once they tell some of their stories holographically to an audience, the audience can actually ask questions. A microphone will get passed around. Um, they'll ask a question to the microphone. Natural language understanding technology will figure out which response is most appropriate for that question, and then it will play that back. So there can be a Q&A period afterwards. What excites you about the project? I'm very excited about trying to you know, recreate as, as much as possible this amazing experience. I, I got to be here when they were uh, interviewing um, Pinkas Guter and just with how good a storyteller he is and I mean really how wrenching some of the things that he has to talk about of course with this, with this subject matter. Um, it's a deeply emotional experience and you know it really changes you and it's so sad to realize that um, you know, we are in the waning years of being able to hear these testimonies directly uh, from the people who were there. It's, it's such important stuff. So if we can um, get something that's, you know, even 10% of that experience preserved. We know we can shoot video, we can show, you know, we can show high-def video uh, of people. That only goes so far. If we can get maybe 10% further toward what it's like to actually be in their presence, to hear their stories, uh, from them in person uh, and to have that interaction, I think we will have done something very valuable. And I think the technology is just at that perfect point where we're going to be able to record what we need now so that as we develop the holographic display technology, we have a, a pretty good one that's uh, about 8 by 10 inches that we can put a face on. Uh, we're working on building the full size one. Uh, I think it's going to be pretty amazing and I can't imagine uh, more interesting and important uh, material to try to be visualizing. When I was watching the, the simulation, uh, it just it just it touched me in a way that I didn't expect because especially in these days when you have a lot of uh, Holocaust deniers, um, you, you think in the next five ten years when unfortunately a lot of these survivors aren't going to be around, what can you do? And this is just a wonderful solution to be able to come to the classroom, you know, speak, um, ha have that interaction that you would never ever imagine could happen. It's just a, it's, it's really the future of the Holocaust education in a way that, um, you know, my, my grandparents uh, survived the Holocaust and I, I, I went to uh, the camps on a, on a college of martial living and I, when, and I think back of like trying to tell a story but when you actually now hear those survivors because that's always the most powerful experience that is your key um, and seeing that just it, it was incredibly moving and, uh, and it, it gives hope that you know when you say never again um, that this really is uh, a tool to ensure the future of education. Absolutely, I mean every, everything really comes into a completely new perspective uh, to be working with this kind of material and uh, 
you know, we, we've, we've gotten to do some, some relatively high profile projects from, you know, scanning actors from, uh, from Avatar to, you know, getting some of our technology used in the, you know, the, the latest video game engines. But, you know, seriously, this is something that, um, you know, it's really inspiring us to invent everything that we possibly can, figure out that, you know, within the budgetary constraints, every single pixel that we can record of this so that we can display this into the future is, uh, is, is getting expended at, at this point. And it, it, the, the material just clearly deserves it. Do you have, like, a time frame? I mean, like, in the next, like, year, do you know right now how many people you want to record? Yeah, I think we will have... Um, the, the goal currently is to do 10 survivors. Uh, we're hoping to get uh, the first of them in early this year and then start in the fall with uh, getting more people to come through. And the uh, uh, holographic uh, display, you know, again, we had an 8 by 10 inch version. We have all of the video projectors necessary for the life-size version. And we'll start building that out over the spring. Uh, maybe by the end of summer, we'll actually have some of Pinchas Guter, you know, life-size holographically, and hopefully it kind of looks a little bit like he's right in front of you. Yeah, that's, I, whenever I, I think about it, it really is something out of, like, um, a science fiction movie. Like, we, we as, uh, you know, people who want to propel the, the memory of the Holocaust, um, using technology is... Um, a wonderful way now to really tell them what, what's going to happen in five years, ten years, twenty years. As technology evolves, so does education. And uh, now we're actually talking about holograms, and that's just, it's just amazing. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And it's, it's going to be there. It's like we wanted to be able to see in 3D without the glasses on our TVs for a long time now. With the, the experiments that, that we've done and what we've seen, it's clear that this is going to be a reality, and it's going to be a relatively standard way uh, of experiencing content, uh, certainly 10 years from now, 20 years from now. We want these stories to seem immediate and relevant uh, 100 years from now, 500 years from now. And you can go back to you know, any particular intersection of, of history and technology to the fact like, okay, we had you know, some very great photographs of Abraham Lincoln. Photography hadn't been around too long before then. But that helps us really, you know, humanize that part of history in a way that we don't have for uh, presidents who came uh, earlier before him. We want absolutely the best that technology can offer today available to these survivors and what they have to say as their legacy goes into the future. Can you walk us through the process? So after you uh, do the shoot, um, what happens on your end um, in terms of making the outcome alive? Well... <laughs> We, we walk away from the light stage with um, uh, a, a huge amount of, uh, of, of video data, uh, multiple cameras running at high frame rates, um, high resolution. So what we have to do is take all of this uh, video and uh, run uh, three-dimensional reconstruction algorithms on it to go from the multiple 2D video streams to the three-dimensional uh, version of the shape of the survivor as they're, as they're making hand gestures, as they're, as they're speaking, as they move their head. Um, even the things that a person just does with their feet as they sit in a chair as they're speaking is part of their, uh, is part of their presence, and you can read you know, emotional state from that. So this is um, you know, terabytes upon terabytes of data we have to run it through these algorithms that run on uh, GPU units, the same high-end graphics cards that people might use to, uh, you know, to, to play the latest uh, Halo video game. Uh, those are going to be crunching very hard around the clock on multiple computers uh, to figure out the three-dimensional shape, uh, the reflectance properties, the, the texture map, as it were, uh, for them. And then it all gets... Um, diced into what the different video projectors of the holographic display are going to show. Then all of that will run on computers. They'll be essentially playing uh, almost 300 different movies from different angles of the survivor. Um, unlike the Tupac hologram, which is actually just 2D video floating in space. It works if you're an audience that's far away from the subject. We need these holograms to work close up. When Pinkas goes to a classroom, you know, the children are, uh, you know, sitting eight feet away from him. Uh, that's important to be able to 
you know, for a life-size subject to really see the subtleties of the facial expression and what they're saying. So we need this to actually work so that if you're sitting in front, you see him from the front. If you're sitting to the right, then you see him from the right. If you sit, see him from the uh, sitting to the left, you see him from the left. And that's what our technology uh, can do. As a result, you not only see 3D because your two eyes are getting different views, but even as you just kind of naturally shift back and forth, you get what's called motion parallax that will uh, increase the feeling of the, of the solidity of the they are really there. And we're also working with a technology that can illuminate uh, the survivor with the appropriate lighting for the room that they're being projected into. So if you have windows off to the side here, you'll actually see that same light of those same windows illuminating their face from that angle. And you'll be able to uh, see that much more what it would look like if they were really there uh, with you. So it's a lot of processing. Uh, it's quite a bit of technology development, but all of this is um, you know, being accelerated throughout this year. And uh, I think we'll be able to, by this time next year, I think we'll have some good examples of it. As you can see, holograms are going to be an incredible resource to helping future generations understand what survivors went through in the Holocaust. This is Aaron Herman, and thank you for watching.